with the GoCurrency.com sports ticker. I'm Tim Mulhaupt on the Huskers Radio Network. Happy Halloween, Huskers fans. We have a fun hour ahead for you tonight before we hand the reins off to Fred Hoiberg and the men's basketball show. We start with Huskers volleyball tonight. In the latest ABCA poll, Huskers volleyball slipped from 1-4 to four following a 1-1 one one week with a loss to Wisconsin and a sweep victory over Maryland. Texas popped back up to number one, followed by San Diego at two and Wisconsin at three. In the rest of the Big Ten, Ohio State fell, held firm at six. Minnesota uh, held firm at ninth. Purdue dropped to 14th. Penn State fell to 15th. And just up I-80, Creighton rose to 13th. In pro sports tonight, the World Series continues in Philadelphia tonight, or at least they're going to try to start game three. That series currently tied one per side the original start time for this one is 7 3 p.m but rain is currently moving through the area and the tarp was on the field i believe it still is out there in philadelphia so we'll see when that game gets underway as it stands lance mccullers will start for the astros and noah Syndergaard will throw for the fields and the nfl today it was a busy day as there was a couple of moves around the league there's a trade deadline tomorrow but one big move today the ravens traded for star linebacker from the chicago bears roquan smith for a 2023 second and fifth round pick. And in the AFC North tonight, it's a AFC North showdown on Monday Night Football. The Bengals are in Cleveland to take on the Browns. And shout out to two pro Huskers in the NFL yesterday. Samari Toure recorded his first touchdown. It was a beautiful throw from Aaron Rodgers in the Packers' loss to the Bills last night on Sunday Night Football. Go look that one up. That is a great highlight if you haven't seen it already. And former Huskers defensive lineman Carlos Davis provided one of the only highlights for producer Andrew and I, Steelers, as he recorded his first career sack in the Eagles' blowout of the Steelers yesterday afternoon. And in the, uh, excuse me, looking just to see if there's any update, no updated time, looked like for a second there would be there for the Astros and Phillies, but we'll keep you posted on that one. It has been rained out. Okay, there has been, that game three has been canceled tonight for, unfortunately, for the World Series. So we'll see when uh, the makeup date is for that one. This update is presented by Currency. Does your business need help financing big-ticket items like equipment, trucks, and trailers? Currency is here to help. Visit GoCurrency.com for details. That's the ticker. I'm Tim Mulhelped, and Sports Nightly is next on the Huskers Radio Network. Coming to you live from Memorial Stadium, it's Sports Nightly. All the Huskers, all the time. Sports Nightly is presented by the NDOT Highway Safety Office, who reminds you to buckle up and put the phone down. Left elbow with it is Gary, drives inside, spins, puts it up and in. Joan Gary in an N1. Put him in a spin cycle and got the two. It's overpass shot by Kalen Hart, kaboom. Start dreaming a little. Return, they throw it out. It's a lateral. Williams looking to throw the football now, being chased out of the pocket and shoved out of bounds. He'll lose a dozen yards. Clear back to the 34 yard line. Williams got shoved into the Husker bench. Quinn Newsom again there, DB. Yeah, he is all dog today. Four seconds to go. In the corner, deep right side. Natty Crow on the corner for three. You betcha. Natty Crow with a punctuation mark to end the first half. McKenzie, perfect pass, set to the right. Lawrence Dean, kaboom. Woohoo! Waking babies all over North Bottoms. That's 18 15, big red. Finally, Greasel gets the defensive carom. Down the four to Lloyd. Shoots the three on the way. Bang! A ring! Romel Lloyd Jr. with a big, 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 big three. How about that shot? Casey rolls, steps, throws, has a man downfield. Hook collect, makes the catch. 35 30, 25 20, 15 10, 5. Touchdown, Nebraska. Here are your hosts. Greg Sharp and Jessica Cootie on the Huskers Radio Network. Happy Halloween to everybody. Hope you're safe and having some fun out there tonight. Or if you're just delivering candy at your front door, have some fun with this. It's a beautiful night around the state of Nebraska. Tim was in full garb earlier. We want to thank some of our listeners who have sent us costumes, candy, so that we don't feel left out. We're stuck here in our studio tonight, but we, I feel very festive tonight i know we're not missing out on trick-or-treating because we've got more than enough goodies here we do yes unless uh, the boys eat it all back there i know we gotta hurry up and get through this segment so we can get yeah. to some candy get some candy and <laughs> get some sugar in this thing all right we're gonna talk about this football game here in hour number one uh jessica talked with garrett nelson after the game we'll hear that a little bit later uh, hour two it's our men's basketball show fred hoiberg will be here the huskers traveled to boulder yesterday put up a pretty good fight after a wretched start where they've got behind 10 to nothing but really battled the buffaloes pretty well dead even from that point on some encouraging signs to the team we'll talk about that with the coach 
in hour number two. Also, want you to be a part of this one as well. 402-413-2400. That's the number to be on the show with a call or a text. That is our Sports Nightly Hotline brought to you by Woodhouse, where you can shop your way from one of the 16 convenient locations or online at woodhouse.com with 18 brands and a huge selection of pre-owned. You can always find what you are looking for with Woodhouse. All right, uh, great opportunity Saturday, and the Huskers had the lead at 9-6. to six. Then Casey Thompson gets hurt, and it was like somebody unplugged the battery from the Huskers' car. They just couldn't get anything going after that point. Yeah, and they had it figured out. I mean, they, again, sitting down there on the sidelines and listening into the huddles, I, it took them a while to settle in, and that's what Mickey Joseph had said. He had missed a couple of throws, and he said Casey's going to settle in, and then I just I think the offense – had figured some things out and they guys were getting open and they had a lot of um, opportunities even that you know might have been missed those first couple of drives and uh, but I, you just you had a sense that they were getting some momentum and they were starting to figure some things out and the wheels just came off after Casey went down but you can't let that happen you're gonna have injuries within a game and yes the quarterback is the most important position but Logan slash Chubba, they've got to be better. And I think Mickey kind of said that after the game. But I want to go to the, the drive, Jessica, where Casey got hurt. Two plays before that, beautifully conceived play. Ramir, a little, little flag route, and he drops the football. It was a little bit behind him, but he needs to make that catch. And then, boom, two plays later, Casey gets hit, knocked out of the game. Yeah, I mean, again, things happen in a football game, and – it, but it it just it, it stinks that that was, you know, because he missed that play. Then you're in a certain situation, and then, you know, and again, I, I talked to Ethan Piper after the game, and, and he had said it was a, a twist that had happened that he thought that maybe, you know, again, just. But they had di had done a pretty good job, I thought, of protecting him up until that they point, have. and so it just unfortunate, you know, things happen, and, yeah, uh, you know, the way it unfolds, and and you can't point to one thing but yeah it just boy they were getting open and they had guys open and that's what Mark Whipple came over and said they cannot cover everybody it's just they just can't and, and that's what I had kind of alluded to going into the game that there was too many weapons on the field and and that's going to be the case for most defenses is it if they can get Casey enough or whoever the quarterback enough time to throw it most of the time they're going to have an option of somebody being open whether that was Alante Brown boy it was good to see him get going sure and was. get involved Travis Folkolek. If they're going to try to take Trey Palmer out, there's enough guys that can be open. And, and in fact, I just sat down and uh, with a for a long conversation with Trey Palmer, and he said that he said if if m my presence is drawing attention, where hey, there's other guys that I know can get the job done. And so there was, and that was what the case was on Saturday. It's just unfortunate that um, you know, unfortunately, the the two guys that came in after Casey went down couldn't keep that rhythm going. Yeah, and you know. Alante had two catches in the game and, and a big play earlier in the game before Casey got hurt. That was part of that 93-yard drive. 93 yards against that defense was so impressive. Huskers had the lead, the momentum. You just felt like something that was gonna, special was going to happen, and then the hit and the injury. Defensively, Jessica, I thought it was, it was a pretty solid effort by Nebraska. Yes, Brown got his yards, but that defense got put in some really tough spots, held Illinois to field goal attempts, which they made. But I thought the defense gave Nebraska a chance in that game. How many yards did he have at half, though? Because that was, you know, at, at halftime when I talked to Mickey, he said everything they've got, we've given to them. 66 at the half. So you got more in the second half. Um, so everything that, that they had gotten at that point, they had given them. They had 26 points, but how many of those were off the turnovers? At they, least. They ended up with 10 off turnovers. Yeah. So the defense did a, a solid job. And again, they gave up the touchdown there to start – is to start and I did a report on this how they went over to the sideline and the coaches made some adjustments they got on the whiteboard like Damon talks about and they said hey if this happens again this is what we're going to do so they adjusted after that first drive and they they really locked in there and it just when you're on the field for that long eventually it's just they're going to start wearing you down and so when the offense turned the ball over or couldn't sustain drives and keep it going we heard Mark Whipple saying that was going to be a key they couldn't have quick series they could not have uh, they had to stay out on the field and couldn't have three and outs and then when that started happening it just wears down a defense and that's what Illinois does and so if you don't combat that with your offense with what you're doing offensively it's just going to wear down the defense and that's eventually what happened but I thought you know 
all said and done outside that first drive, they made adjustments. They, they did a good job until the they just got tired and worn down there in the second half. DeVito was 20 of 22, but he didn't complete a pass that he threw it over 10 yards. All 20 completions were inside the line of scrimmage and 10 yards, including the little rub route to Isaiah Williams that he then housed uh, with a great crossing route and ran it down. So just a lot of dink and dunks for Illinois. It was effective. They kept the football away for Nebraska. But again, Nebraska held them to two field goals in the second half. That was, you know, now, now if Nebraska was putting more pressure on them offensively, would they have opened it up? Probably. But again, I, I thought I thought that was, you can work with that defensive effort. You can build off of that. And one of those field goals was an interception that basically was going to be a guaranteed. Well, the fumble by Anthony Grant gave him the ball like the 23-yard yeah. line. Yeah. And they had to kick a field goal in that drive. Right. So, I mean, there were times that they were had some really good field position that the defense locked in and, and yep. held them to three where they very easily could have scored touchdowns. Yep. They had two drives. After the pick that Casey got hurt on, they started at the 11. They scored a touchdown there, and then after the Anthony Grant fumble, they were three and out, but were close enough to kick a field goal and kick the field goal. So there's 10 points that they got off of two Husker turnovers, and the de defense only had a couple yards to defend. So. And then the the interception in this right in the third quarter that um, Chubba, threw. Chubba threw, that was pretty... It was near their goal line. Okay. We were in field goal range. Okay. And I even said the comment to Damon, I go, got to take care of the ball here because you've got points. Yeah. Even if you don't get this third down converted, you can kick a field goal and get within eight. And what? And so they didn't score off of that. But, yeah, I mean, there well, were. I think they did. I think they did drive oh, they the did? ball. Okay. They had to go 70-some yards. That's where they took That's where they took a, about eight minutes off the clock on that drive. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, you, I mean, at some point, you got to play complimentary football. You do. And, that's where just eventually Illinois um, did and, and Nebraska didn't and when they weren't getting points on the board when they boy that you thought when they came out of they've d done such a good job of coming out of halftime making adjustments and starting and getting a good start and so you get the you don't score but you get the interception boy you think oh maybe something can get going here and then it just seemed like the wind came out of the sails after that interception sure did uh, Bill in Portland says hey don't give up on Sheba. Uh, he's our five-star quarterback. If, it's he, if he's the guy, let's all support him and get after him. And I agree, Bill. If, if Chubba is the guy that walks out there Saturday, if Casey can't go, absolutely. We need to support uh, Chubba moving forward. Let's head to the phone. Let's go to Columbus. And Jim, good evening, Jim. Welcome to Sports Nightly. Hi, Jim. Hello. Yes, sir. Well, hi, Greg, Jessica. Happy Halloween. Hey, Jim. Happy Halloween. I see Hey, uh, I see you're wearing my T-shirt or sweatshirt. Yeah, thank you. We do. We have them on. Yeah. You're, you're welcome. Uh, I would just like to touch on uh, Saturday's game, and uh, I'm getting a lot of feedback. I don't know if it's my fault or what, but but um, when when you watch it live on TV, you kind of miss a lot of things because everything happens so fast. <clears throat> But I rewatched it Sunday, and I've seen a lot of good things on, on the field where there was a lot of, on the defense, there was a lot of, a lot of guys running around or taking care of other guys' mistakes. We've never seen that before for quite a few years. And I think they're on the right track in offense, had some miscues, uh, but they're correctable. And I don't know, uh, all of a sudden I hear people want to get rid of Mickey Joseph already. And I think if we give him one, two years, uh, we could be in the upper echelon in the West Division of the Big Ten if they would just hang in there just a little bit longer. <clears throat> That's all I have to say. But. Jim, thanks. And again, thanks for sending us the goodies. We, uh, we're having fun with this. We're going to have fun with this throughout the show. You might have seen Tim doing the ticker. He had a hoodie on earlier, a little cape, little cape Yes. With, with his hoodie pulled up on top of him. Yeah, it looked good. So uh, Andrew might even be roaming around here a little bit as well. As, uh, you know, Mickey certainly does have a lot of people supporting him, and that's great. I think it's fantastic that people have rallied around Mickey. I think the team has. I think Mickey's done some really good things. I think we all just have to put our trust in Trev Alberts that Trev's going to make the right call for the future of this program. Absolutely. I mean, I've maintained that all along, and I think he's going to keep doing his due diligence. And, and I think a lot is probably he's evaluating what's happening these next few weeks and what's unfolding. And so, yeah, I, I think he's 
making sure that he's got the right guy and I am glad I'm not the one that's having to make that decision. Right. That's exactly right. <laughs> got a text. Can you shed some light on Coach Joseph's purple suit and gold tie for the Unity Walk? What's up with that? That's, I know he had a purple suit on when he came in. I, I don't know. I mean, he did work at LSU for a while. Uh, maybe he hasn't got his wardrobe completely up to date with, with all red, but I thought it looked pretty sharp. Yeah, he did. It? Yeah. He had a light blue one on a week or so ago that was kind of a good look. Yeah. So Setting the tone. Yeah. He's, he had, you know, talked about that, about – you know, he wants to be a, a leader of not just players, of men. And um, I know that's important for him to, you know, set that example. So, yeah, I liked, I liked the style. Damon liked it too, right? You guys were talking about his run out, right? He's got to get the gate going a little bit more. <laughs> He's got, Mickey's got a little more engine than that, doesn't he, in his go? I couldn't see. So the tunnel. He got passed real quick. So the tunnel this week was super Ooh, long. Huge. And the, the captains almost got ran over, and it was, like, kind of wild. So I couldn't see what was all going on. There was so much going on on the sideline. There was. I was, it was busy. It was overwhelming. It was, there was a lot going on. Very, very busy. Hey, buckle up. Put the phone down. A reminder from the NDOT Highway Safety Office. Dale and Hastings on our text line said, I did not get to hear the Nebraska Colorado basketball game but heard that Derek Walker did not play is that true he did not play and uh, we will have coach Hoiberg in next hour we'll ask him if there's an update but he just said uh, something medically is going on with Derek and he said Derek will reveal that at that at his at his time but uh, did not he was on the trip he did, did not dress and just sat on the bench in street clothes so other than that we don't know the status of Derek Walker. Huskers will open the season a week from today. Both the men and women will open next Monday. The men will be playing the main Bears at 7 o'clock and the women will open up their season earlier in the day. I'm, I'm drawing a blank on who the women open with. Uh, is it Omaha? Could be Omaha. The men play Omaha later in the week. So Yeah, it's we'll Omaha. See the, see the Mavericks, both men and women next week. The women play at noon next Monday, and the men will play at 7 o'clock. So, again, Fred Hoiberg here in hour number two of the show. We need to take a break. 402-413-2400. More of the show coming up. Do you want your date to wait for your interlock device to let you drive? Your kids to ask why you have an ankle bracelet? Or your boss to see your criminal history? Do you want to miss important life events because of house arrest? Get a ride. A DUI costs more than you think. Brought to you by the NDOT Highway Safety Office. In America, the future belongs to everyone. So we designed the Ford trucks of the future for everyone. Ford F-Series, America's best-selling trucks for 45 years straight. Made for performance and capability on and off-road. Because the trucks of the future aren't designed for a few. They're built for America. Ford F-Series. Drive one today. Based on 1977 to 2021 calendar year total sales. It's time again for some Nebraska farm facts. For Nebraska soybean farmers, sustainability is a way of life. 97% of farms are family owned and 95% are participating in conservation programs and using sustainable practices. And they have significant sustainability goals by 2025. 10% more energy efficiency, 10% less land, and 25% less soil erosion. This message is brought to you by Nebraska Soybean Farmers. Growing opportunity from the ground up. There's a call on the field for a quality seed specific to where you farm. Make the right call with Prairie Valley. With local research in eight regions throughout Nebraska, Prairie Valley performs with their locally specific hybrids and varieties while achieving the highest quality and yield. No matter where you farm in Nebraska, Prairie Valley has the seed for where you are. Find a local dealer and learn more about the seed for where you are at prairievalleyseeds.com. Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Nebraska exists to be there with you. They are rooting for the schools and teachers who make our communities great. That's why Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Nebraska is proud to sponsor Touchdowns for Teachers and ask Husker fans to nominate outstanding educators who help Nebraska students reach their potential. If there's a teacher you want to recognize for the impact they've made in your community, find a nomination form at huskers.com slash touchdowns for teachers. 
It's harvest special time, and you can save $3 per foot or $3,900 per quarter mile system now on a TNL pivot system. Pivots worked long hours this season battling dry weather to save top dollar corn and soybean crops. But did your pivots work like no other? If not, it's time to invest in a reliable, safe, low maintenance TNL irrigation system. Hydrostatic drives move these durable workhorses continuously across fields. So get an irrigation system that works as hard as you do. Contact TNL Irrigation, your local TNL dealer, or visit us online at TLIRR.com. TNL Irrigation Systems like no other. Get us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. Agriculture is the economic engine of the Midwest. At Acres Equipment, we dedicate ourselves to making that engine run smoothly. We supply our farmers and ranchers with quality John Deere equipment, parts, and service. We also deliver the most advanced technology and precision ag strategies to help them farm today and for the future. Acres Equipment, solutions for every field. Bank of the West is offering the first checking account designed for climate action. It gives back 1% of the account's net revenue to the planet at no cost to you. Shows you the estimated carbon impact of debit card purchases. And there's no minimum balance required. Learn more at bankofthewest.com slash 1%. Additional conditions apply. Member FDIC. When you're prepared for life, you get more out of life. When you're prepared, you spend less time worrying and more time doing the things you love. How prepared are you? When you're ready to find out, Emeritus is ready to help. First, we get to know you. Then we make a plan together, one that lets you enjoy today and prepare for tomorrow. That's what we call fulfilling life. Emeritus, insurance, employee benefits, financial services. Get a high D plus premium membership for just $99 a year and get fuel savings every time you shop in store and online. Plus exclusive deals and offers every month. Plus free standard delivery and free express pickup. With High V Plus, our plus equals more. For a limited time, get $50 off an annual High V Plus membership with code SAVEBIG. That's right, get $50 off a High V Plus membership with code SAVEBIG. Every day, Central Valley Ag works with our farmers to feed a hungry planet. CVA's Avail T5 uses patented polymer technology to optimize phosphorus performance, making crops healthier and boosting yields while reducing phosphorus loss to the environment. Register to win 160 acres of T5 treatment valued at over $1,500 when you go online to cvacoop.com. Our planet is hungry. Together, we feed it. Central Valley Ag, the official co-op of Husker Nation. Farmers Mutual of Nebraska is proud to support Husker Athletics. Having a competent teammate beside you makes all the difference when it comes to protecting what matters most. With a proven track record of dependable coverage, unmatched financial strength, and a prompt claim service team right here in Nebraska, that's insurance kept local. Visit FMNE.com to contact an agent for a quote today. Farmers Mutual of Nebraska, always alongside you. Back inside our Huskers Radio Network Broadcast Center, it is sponsored by Acres, the Midwest <laughs> premier John Deere dealer, supplying the, the equipment and service to advance agriculture and much more Acres solutions for every field. Happy Halloween. I've added a wig to the attire <laughs> that came from Jim. Thank you. Look at Jessica. Look at wow. mine. I got some go big red streaks in my wig. Little Elvira. Right there, a little Elvira look. Yes. Yours needs some floofing. Yeah, mine needs a little work. See, I took mine oh, out. Oh, little Red Riding Hood <laughs> just went by you. I took mine out to, like, let it, you know, get fixed a little bit. I don't know if I did, if it works. Andrew's, but... <laughs> wearing, Andrew's got the cape on, the little Red Riding Hood cape. He's zipping around behind us here, so... <laughs> what a good, what a fun holiday. It's Shout a out Jim. Day. Jim just called in. He sent us in these uh, costumes. And so the uh, chat room is getting a <laughs> kick out of, uh, out of the costumes here. I'm trying to flip my hair up, get it out of my face here a little bit. 402-413-2400, <laughs> the number if you want to be a part of the program. We are recapping the Huskers game with Illinois on Saturday. No update today on Casey. Uh, Mickey will have his press conference tomorrow. We'll probably get one tomorrow. He did. We did tape the television show, Jessica, yesterday, and he did kind of say right at the end, 
He'd be surprised if Casey could go Saturday. I, I, I don't think he knew that for sure. I think that was just kind of his gut. Yeah, I, I um, maybe a little gamesmanship, you know? I don't know, maybe. Sure. But all I know is Casey is a tough, tough kid. So if there's any chance he can go, he will go. He, he will try to go. I, I thought it was kind of... I think it was of, an elbow. Don't you think it's an elbow? Yeah, I, I really do. I think it was his elbow and probably swelling. But the fact that, you know, normally when um, someone leaves and it's serious they don't come back in their uniform right and so and he I, did he came back and had his his pads on and everything and so and his, his demeanor seemed okay so to me if it was really really serious I, I think you it would have been a little bit more telling but we'll see I, I don't know um hopefully if that's the case either way whether he can or cannot go at least this gives a chance for the two backups whoever it might be to have the week to prepare as they are the starter and, and I know you're, that's what you're supposed to do yeah but at least if you know now that there's a possibility, you absolutely know like that this is a possibility that they're going to need you, that you prepare, you just probably prepare in a different way. 402-413-2400, the number to call or text. Let's go to the phones. Pete in West Point. Good evening, Pete. Good evening. How you doing? Good, thanks. You know, I guess when you break the film down, you kind of watch it a little bit, uh, a little closer. Nebraska just can't get over not doing the little things. The little things is killing this team. If it's where your eyes are on the defense, where your defensive backs, where their eyes are, eye placement, to just simply moving your feet a little bit to, to nudge a guy out of the way when he's coming through the line, it's, it's just a lot of little things that really hamper this team. And I don't even want to talk about the second half. Um, that that not even worth discussing but man they've got it they've got to get the little things corrected and if they do you know they could have a halfway decent season yet they could definitely play a lot better but the little things are still killing this team no i agree uh, you know missing open wide receivers is then pete thanks for the call you know and, and we got a text about the blocked extra point and, and there's video that the huskers couple linemen didn't even move get out of their stands to block and that's why they got the middle block on Bleak Road's point after that would have given us a four-point lead. That's a little thing that adds up to why you lose. I think I think uh, Pete's right on it. Still too many little things not happening. Yeah, absolutely. And and I can't even talk because this <laughs> hair is like all up in my face. Uh, but yeah, no, I mean, absolutely. You know, and it just, again, they just are, are snake bit a little bit, it seems like. You know, I mean, just one thing after another that – I, you just felt the rhythm and the, the tide turning and how much did Damon talk about momentum and how it never really actually fully went on to Illinois until Didn't. the second half. Right. And so, you know, the fact that there's these little things that, that happened and then you, you don't actually completely lose the momentum, it could have derailed a lot, a lot worse, but you just felt like they had some things going in the works. And then all of a sudden here goes down, goes the quarterback and they just can't get anything going offensively. And then the snowball effect of the defense has to be out there too long and, you know, just, yeah, uh, absolutely. But I, it's just so frustrating because it's like one, it's something happens every every game that you're like, oh, if that one thing doesn't happen, what does this team end up doing the rest of the way of the, in the game? And so, yeah, uh, I agree. But uh, they just got to find a way to get over some of those things when they do happen in the game. You've got hair in your face. I'm not used to hair in my head. So I'm, <laughs> I'm really having to figure, figure this thing out. <laughs> Uh, Doug in Norfolk on our text line said, I'd like to see the new coach contract be short term with a low base pay, but loaded with high incentives, win the division, get to a bowl game, et cetera, et cetera, and no buyout clause. Well, Doug, I mean, whoever, whoever, if it's going to be Mickey or whoever, Trev's going to have to deal with an agent and agents are going to work for the best deal for their clients. So I'm kind of with you, but I don't know if those, that kind of deal will fly. A lot of these guys... They want to – somebody's going to take care of these coaches. It's an agent that usually gets involved. Unfortunately, it's just what um, – I mean, I shouldn't say unfortunately, but it's it's where college football is, right? I mean, look at all the massive contracts that have happened across the country. Auburn's guys out today. Yeah, and so it's to be able to compete to get the best guys in and to make sure – because. You know, you just want, as a head coach, you want some assurances, right? And so I just, I think the way that the contracts have gone and, and how the precedent has been set, it's just where it is where it's these massive contracts to, to try to 
make sure that you're protected and taken care of in any kind of circumstance. I mean, look at look at Jimbo's contract. Still like eighty five. Like Eighteen mil. Uh, yeah, like eighty five million. million or yeah, eighty five million. Unbelievable. Uh, Tim in Minnesota on our text line said, I would sure like to see Logan get more opportunity. If any quarterback besides Casey has proven he can lead the Huskers in a significant game, it's Logan. And Logan did play really well against Iowa last year. I remember how happy his teammates were for him uh, standing by you in the hallway after that game. He got a lot of praise from his teammates. You played well, Logan. Good job. Yeah, he really did. I mean, and, and um even because he felt he put a lot on his shoulders because he threw the interception at the end. I, I, I think that's how it went down. And he was pretty down about it. And you remember Trent Hickson on the sideline. Hey, keep your head up, you know, and, and um, there's a lot of players coming to him. And hey, you battled hard for us. You, you kept us in it. You know, that's the thing. That's what you want. And your your backup quarterback, right, is, is to keep you in a game and give you a chance to win it. And so, yeah, but I do think it's a little tough with Logan and just the um, – um, you know the system of the the way that the offense is built and it's tailored right to Casey and so it, it's hard right. to have a quarterback do what Casey does Casey's played a lot of football and Casey has it's just been built around his strengths and and the strengths of the guys that are around him so it's hard to ask a guy like Logan Spothers to come in who's his best attribute is his feet and what he can do there it's just a completely different system a different offense um you know and and chubba is the same way it's it's hard to ask chubba who hasn't played as much football to come in and do what casey does it's just it's a lot to ask of a guy buckle up put the phone down a reminder from the ndot highway safety office all right you had a chance to talk to a couple of players after the game one of them was, was the defensive captain, Garrett Nelson. Yes, so Garrett, again, pretty proud of, of this team, and he had a couple big sacks. Or uh, did They didn't give him the sack, right? He was so he was mad about they that. They said the quarterback got right back to the line of scrimmage, so it ended up not being a sack. He, he was talking to Keith Mann about that, uh, and, I yeah, I don't think they were happy that he— I gave him credit on the air, though. Yeah, you did. That's all that matters. He got a big max sack on— Does that count if you give it on the air? Well, we got two sacks later in the okay, game. Okay, so, so it we, doesn't we matter. Good. Okay, yeah, all right, good. all right. Yeah, so here is uh, Garrett Nelson after the game. Security with Garrett Nelson. Well, I know I, you guys are super disappointed, but throughout this whole game, it seemed like the defense never gave up, never uh, lost faith, and you guys fought the entire way. You got to be proud of the effort, especially I mean, you were flying around at, at times. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, um, the defense does a great job playing together, and like you said, flying around and bringing great effort every day. So um, just got to keep that consistent and uh, carry that in the rest of the season. Seems like there's a lot of in-game adjustments being made too. How good is that going? And how much are you guys just again figuring out with Coach Bush and the coaching changes and all that, just figuring out what this defense was to do? Yeah, the coach adjustments are awesome getting, getting on the sideline and uh, giving these guys a different look coverage wise or front wise um, giving them different blitzes and stuff like that you know adjusting to things or issues and getting coached constantly by those guys is awesome no Nick Henrich and it seemed like you were a vocal guy going up and down I know you always try to be that but how important is that for you to step into that with uh, Nick Henrich being out now yeah um, you know the middle linebackers are the core of uh, those those guys are kind of the commanders of the field on the defense so you know doing doing my best kind of taking some of the weights on my shoulders with those defensive line guys um, you know making sure they're lined up and you know making sure everybody's kind of on the same page you know doing doing what I can do um, and making sure I, I still do my job so um, just being you know trying to be an extra voice um, trying to give more of my voice um, with Nick being out. Uh, how about the guys that filled his role today? They seem to step up. They did a great job. Um, that really, that talks that says a lot about his room, uh, him and Luke's room. Um, you know, those guys are always in there together, watching film, doing, uh, getting on the same page, and acting like uh, you know, even the third and fourth string guys are going to play and start. I know you guys as even just got to do your job. It seems like the the wind was kind of taken out of the sails when when Casey went out, had some things going offensively, and and just sputtered there after that. How do you guys uh, bounce back from that, depending on whether he's available or not, and keep this rolling? Because it seems like there's still a lot left to play for for this team. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I, I can't control that side of the ball. I can control this team, this defense. Um, you know, those, these coaches know what they're doing. They're really smart. They make the adjustments uh, for us, and they're putting the best situation that we can. As a leader and, and just a voice, uh, what's the message to the team overall? Um, yeah, like you said, there's a lot out there for us still. Um, got to keep coming back to work. Um, you know, like I said, the, the, this team's fight and, the, and togetherness is unwavering. So I know, uh, I know we'll come back this week enthusiastic, ready to go play a football game again. Appreciate it, Garrett. Thank you so much. So, yeah, he was, um, you know, proud of the defense and the way they, they fought there. But, uh, man, you just – you uh, talk to guys like Garrett Nelson and he wants it so bad. And even, you know, Trey Palmer, I said, I just had a lengthy conversation with. He would give away – I'll give back all everything that he's ever done to, to, for this team to have some wins. And so you just – 
wish that they could come out on the right end of yep. one of these um, one of these times. Yep, and the next chance, Minnesota, which is an 11 a.m. game on Saturday. Well, folks, go visit a participating Agco dealer between now and November the 4th and enter for a chance to win a pair of tickets to the Nebraska-Wisconsin football game in Lincoln, November 19th. That's our final home game. That'll include a pregame tailgate. See participating Agco locations across Nebraska, and you could be a winner this season. 402-413-2400. That's the number to dial us up with a comment or question. It's our Halloween edition of Sports Alley. Jim in Columbus, thank you very much. Thank you very much, now. <laughs> More of the show coming up. Woodhouse Mazda and Woodhouse Place Mazda are the Omaha Metro's exclusive Mazda dealers. Conveniently located in Bellevue or in Millard off 144th and Giles Road. You can shop, finance, and buy your next Mazda SUV or sedan your way. Our friendly and knowledgeable staff will guide you to your next vehicle. And our full service department is there for you when your vehicle needs maintenance. Visit us at WoodhouseMazda.com or WoodhousePlaceMazda.com to learn more. Preparation is the key to success on game day. And like your favorite Huskers on the field, you need to be ready right from the opening kickoff. Senex has your pregame routine covered. We've got your salty snacks, your sweet treats, ice-cold beverages to wash them down, and fresh tanks of propane to fire up the grill. Fuel your fandom at your local Cenex station. Husker Pride, powered locally. Here's to the locals, raised right here in the Western Corn Belt. The strong ones. We help them grow stronger, making world-class genetics, research, and technology local. The cutting-edge yet common-sense agronomy. The shake up yields. Because we're born and raised here, too. And we'll keep raising the bar to ensure you only get the best. At Hogemeyer. Raise local, raised right here. Learn more at therightseed.com. They say consistency is the key to success. They weren't wrong. So, how about grabbing a beer that's consistently smooth, consistently refreshing, and consistently light? You might just find that the road to success can be pretty enjoyable. Michelob Ultra. The perfect balance of taste and refreshment and only 2.6 carbs and 95 calories. It's only worth it if you enjoy it. Enjoy responsibly. Anheuser-Busch Michelob Ultra Light Beer, St. Louis, Missouri. I'm University of Nebraska-Lincoln student Hannah Pham with Campus News. Nebraska has taken over leadership from Princeton University in coordinating the U.S. physics community at the Large Hadron Collider in Switzerland. For its role, Nebraska has been awarded over $50 million in National Science Foundation grants. This cutting-edge work at the world's largest particle accelerator helps physicists uncover the origins and makeup of the universe. More Nebraskans are choosing chiropractic care first. Studies show that chiropractic is safe, drug-free, and the most effective treatment option for back, neck, and joint pain. It can also help patients of all ages reduce migraines, improve mobility, and maximize athletic performance. Keep the entire family healthy and active with natural, cost-effective chiropractic care. Find a chiropractic physician near you at nebraskachiropractic.org. Get your life back with chiropractic. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. Dear gas prices, go take a hike. Toyota is the number one retail brand for electrified vehicles for 22 years. The Toyota hybrid lineup brings efficiency with power, savings with style, and top-notch tech to keep you connected. Not to mention plush premium interiors and the most advanced Toyota safety features. So, now you know who you're talking to. Toyota the number one retail brand for electrified vehicles for 22 years. Toyota, the brand with a hybrid or electric vehicle for every driver. Toyota, the brand that helps save you money at the pump. Now, let me ask you a question, dear gas prices. You really think you can stand in the way of the number one retail brand for electrified vehicles for 22 years? <laughs> think again. Toyota hybrids. Find yours at toyota.com. Toyota, let's go places based on manufacturer estimates CY2000 through 2021 sales. SOS to the rescue. SOS to the rescue. 
As the Huskers head to halftime, Frank is off the couch and headed for the fridge. Ooh, but he can't make it because he is so cold. The furnace is out again. SOS, he screams, and calls SOS Heating and Cooling, his favorite Luxair dealer trusted since 1950. With Luxair, you get a free 10-year labor warranty with a new system. SOS Heating and Cooling. SOS to the rescue. Beardmore Subaru celebrates Nebraska volleyball again this season. Five national championships, 47 All-Americans, and a home sellout streak dating back to 2001. The longest streak for any women's sport in NCAA history. Beardmore Subaru has been a proud supporter of Husker volleyball for more than 10 years. Beardmore Subaru in Bellevue has the new Subaru Outback Wilderness. Loaded with off-road ready upgrades and the new Solterra, Subaru's first ever all-electric and all-wheel drive vehicle. Go Big Red. When you're prepared for life, you get more out of life. When you're prepared, you spend less time worrying and more time doing the things you love. How prepared are you? When you're ready to find out, Emeritus is ready to help. First, we get to know you. Then we make a plan together, one that lets you enjoy today and prepare for tomorrow. That's what we call fulfilling life. Emeritus, insurance, employee benefits, financial services. Celebrating 50 years in the commercial real estate development industry in Omaha and nationwide, Noddle Companies is proud to continue its tradition of supporting Husker athletics. Check out what's new in Omaha, which includes revolving recreation and the food hall at Zone 6 in Exarban Village. Another exciting project coming soon are the Blackstone Urban Row townhomes. Noddle Companies, creating long-term value through community development. For more information, visit noddlecompanies.com. Go Big Red. Back inside our Huskers Radio Network Broadcast Center, it is sponsored by Acres. They are the Midwest's premier John Deere dealer, supplying the equipment and service to advance agriculture and much more Acres solutions for every field. Craig Sharp, Jessica Cootie with you. It is our Halloween edition of Sports Alley here on the Huskers Radio Network. Top of the hour to our men's basketball show for the week. The head coach, Fred Hoiberg, will be here in hour number two. So get your comments, questions ready for the coach in hour number two. Steve in Woodcliffe Lake says, Greg, can you talk about how many scholarship offensive linemen Nebraska has on the roster? And then if we have any talent coming up in the high school football ranks in the state of Nebraska. I believe the number for scholarship offensive linemen is around 15. Now remember, they got four that are out right now. They've got some offensive linemen that are committed to be here. Now, obviously, those commits probably waiting to see what happens at the head coaching position at the end of this year. Is it going to be Coach Joseph, or do they go a different direction? So that could fluctuate. And you noticed during warm-up, somebody else is now starting to work with the offensive line. Yeah, Jalen Weaver has moved over to the offensive line, and I guess it just happened last week. So maybe trying to provide some depth because those numbers have dwindled uh, this year. Boy, they've been hit really hard there on the offensive line with Nuri, Teddy, Kevin Williams. Brock Banda wasn't even suited out, you know, so, and neither was Kevin Williams, so I don't know how close they are if they weren't suited out, and so, yeah, maybe just trying to get some bodies over there. He, I don't think um, Kevin, or I don't think Jalen has suited out this year. I think he's been kind of in the, on the sideline with, like, the red shirts or with just the jersey and pants, so, you know, I, he was in full pads on Saturday. So, again, maybe just trying to provide some depth. But, yeah, they that position has been hit really, really hard. It has. Jalen's been a defensive lineman, and maybe it wasn't working so well for him there. But it's an, obviously, he's a talented guy. You've got to try to find a spot for that, somebody like that, on the on the field. Let's go to North Platte. Jim, you're up next on Sports Highly. Good evening. Well, good evening to you both. Hey, I've got some questions to ask you. We need some recruiting on the offensive line to get our running game going. Here's a couple of defensive coaches. We need a defensive line to get the defensive pressure on the quarterback. Here's my main, main question. All of these teams are looking at our past games. They are using every pass play running play against this that the other teams are picking up 10, 20, even touchdowns. Why isn't our offensive and our defensive coaches able to figure out what they're using and to put a stop to it? Thank you. All right, thanks. So I think, you know, I think our coaches, I think Bill Bush, particularly on the defensive side, has made some nice adjustments 
for what was going on. We saw some really good halftime adjustments at Purdue. They were hurting us in the first half with a run game, kind of a cutback run game. They changed that up and took that away from Purdue in the second half. So I think we've made some adjustments. And, Jim, we talked about the offensive line right before he came on. We're down four of our top ten guys. Any team that loses four guys like that to injuries, particularly a couple starters in Nuri and Teddy, you're probably not going to be as good. Yeah, it just it hurts. And the depth already kind of was a little short there anyways. And then you just you lose two guys that – have played and Nuri has played a lot of football even he before has. he played a lot last year and he played before so you know it just it, it really hurts and you know I just I I understand that you know you can look at the final stats and you can look at the final score and you know be critical of this defense but I, I just don't think that you can say that there hasn't been improvements made really since Bill Bush took over and there's a different kind of belief on the sideline but you've, if you go back to Purdue we, we talked so much about this about how quickly they had to score they ha and a lot of that is because of you know the offensive line and, and again just building the offense however you can that's the strength of this offense to be able to put points on the board so they had to score fast so the defense was out there on the field a lot same thing with Illinois you know at, at some point if the offense doesn't help your defense that's just it's it's going to come back and the defense is going to give up some points and is going to give up some yards but I don't think you can say that everything has been all bad and that they haven't made adjustments because I, I think they absolutely have I just think at some point you have to recognize that when the offense is going three and out or scoring quickly it's asking a lot of your defense to be on the field that much the offense Saturday only picked up like 29 yards in the second half yeah the entire half so they couldn't get first down so the defense kept going right back out there to defend Illinois had a hard time running between the tackles that means guys like Colton Feast Ty Robinson um Devin Drew, Win, those guys did pretty well. They kept them, they made them go wide to get yards. And, uh, you know, again, I know everybody wants to talk about the stats and stuff too, but boy, the offense has made some turnovers. And again, going back to what Mickey said at halftime to me, that everything they've gotten, we've given them. And so, you know, the, when teams are being able to be set up in the red zone on a turnover, right? And the, how many times has that happened this year? A lot, there's been a lot of scores yeah. on, on opposing teams that, the turnover has been really in not ideal places on the field. So when you're you're giving them great field position after a turnover, it just you know it's it's tough on your defense. And they boy they've risen to the challenge and held them to field goals when they can. But uh, you know I just I think a lot of it the the negative comments towards the defense. You have to sometimes look at the situations that the offense is putting them putting in. Putting them in, yeah. Time to see what's on tap, presented by Bud Light. Husker Volleyball will host Indiana Wednesday night, 8 o'clock at the Devaney Center, 7.30 for pregame coverage. Husker Soccer, a winner yesterday. They're headed to the Big Ten semifinals in Columbus, Ohio on Thursday. They will play at 1 o'clock. BTN will have the television version of that. Good luck to John Walker's Huskers in uh, Columbus. And Husker football, we know now, will play Minnesota Saturday at 11. Pre-game coverage here on the network begins at 4 o'clock. That is what is on tap, presented by Bud Light. Back with our final segment of Hour 1, next. At Nebraska, our people will always be our greatest asset, day by day. Donors give our teams the best opportunity to compete and win through their generous donations. Our vision for the future is ambitious and requires help from those who want to see Husker Athletics excel at the highest level. Go big and join thousands of other Huskers Athletic Fund members with your gift today at huskers.com slash donate. Does your business need quick, competitive financing for heavy machinery, trucks, or other equipment? Currency is here to help. Whether you're financing construction equipment, farm equipment, trucks, trailers, or any other big ticket item, Currency will automatically find the best rates. Currency facilitates loans for up to $500,000 with repayment terms up to 72 months. It's fast, easy, and free to use. Visit GoCurrency.com and apply today. If you're driven by an adventurous heart, you're in luck. The thoughtfully redesigned 2023 Subaru Outback shares your spirit. It will take you as far as you want to explore with standard symmetrical all-wheel drive. It'll get you off the beaten path with up to 9.5 inches of ground clearance, more than Honda CRV or Toyota RAV4. The 2023 Subaru Outback. Go where love takes you. Comparison based on competitor information for manufacturer websites as of June 2022. Duto Subaru in Lincoln and DutoSubaru.com. 
While some seed companies put a greater stake in stock prices and anonymous shareholders, Rob Seco knows that what's important to you hits closer to home. That's why you'll find we're focused on your needs. With a simplicity that makes us easy to do business with, a relationship that makes it easy to connect with anyone in the company, and the technology, traits, and genetics you need from any source. Put your stock in the company that puts you first. Rob Seco. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. <gasps> Look, honey, it's a falling star. Let's make a holiday wish. Now that's a satellite. Oh, there's another. No, airplane. So what are we supposed to wish on? Let's enter non-winning Nebraska Lottery Holiday Wishes 2X, 10X, or 20X scratch tickets for a chance to win one, five, or ten thousand dollars. It's the Holiday Wishes second chance promotion. Now the one over there has to be a falling star. Yeah, sorry, bottle rocket fired off by the college kid next door. Promotion ends January 4th, 2023. Top prize odds vary by game. Get a high plus premium membership for just $99 a year and get fuel savings every time you shop in-store and online. Plus, exclusive deals and offers every month. Plus, free standard delivery and free express pickup. With hy Plus, our plus equals more. For a limited time, get $50 off an annual hy Plus membership with code SAVEBIG. That's right, get $50 off a hy Plus membership with code SAVEBIG. Fans win a Husker football road trip package courtesy of AAA Nebraska. The package will include a couple of tickets to the Black Friday game in Iowa City, a gas card, and hotel accommodations. Enter at huskers.com slash AAA road trip. Expect something more with AAA. Time now for the special teams diagnosis presented by Nebraska Cancer Specialist, Nebraska's leading community oncology practice. Brian Buschini, six punts, averaged over 48 yards a kick on Saturday, and Timmy Bleakroad made his only field goal attempt of the game. The negative would be the block point after, which takes a little wind out of your sails. You score, you get the lead, should have been up four, only up three at, the, at that point in time. Yeah, again, just those special teams plays are just huge momentum swings. Nebraska Cancer Specialist delivers compassionate, personalized, and cutting-edge care in a convenient outpatient setting. They are committed to providing exceptional care and continued support to patients, families, and care givers. About to wrap up this hour, we'll have head coach Fred Hoiberg in next hour for our men's basketball show for the week. The women had their exhibition game yesterday and really dusted off a Division II school in Washburn. Yeah, and again, I, I, they didn't shoot the ball as well as I think they'll shoot it either. I mean, Jazz Shelley, I think, was one of five. We know she can shoot it better than that. And uh, But, yeah, they've got – boy, they're going to be fun to watch. And then the good news about Sam Hybe that came out after the game, that she might, might be back. back. Yeah. I wish that would have been happened to me, that you thought you'd tear your ACL and, oh, wait, you might be back sooner than <laughs> – that's fantastic. Great news for that. Tomorrow, we'll have, uh, Coach Joseph will have his weekly press conference. Hopefully get an update on Casey Thompson. We'll have all the highlights for that for you tomorrow night on the program. And then John Cook has his volleyball show tomorrow night here uh, on Sports Sunday. So busy week. We have a lot of these coaches shows coming everybody's way. Especially in November because uh, it's crossover season, right? They're all going. Yep. They're all cooked up and going. Uh, so, yeah, looking forward to hearing from Mickey tomorrow. And we do know we have an 11, we have an 11 a.m. game. We haven't had one of those since Oklahoma last time we played at 11. I don't love 11 a.m. games. 2.30 is a sweet spot for me. Me too. But me too. you know what? We'll get it done. We were kind of due for him, though. Hey, shout out to me for wearing my wig the rest of the way. You, you took yours off. I did one segment, yeah. I'm going to get mine to Coach Hoiberg, see if he'll wear it. I don't think he'll do that, but you can try. <laughs> hey, our Sports Nightly Hotline is brought to you by Woodhouse, where you can shop your way from one of the 16 convenient locations or online at woodhouse.com. Anytime, 18 brands and a huge selection of pre-owned. You can always find what you're looking for with Woodhouse. Hour two basketball. Hit us up on the text next. line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. Sir by likes a good pass set to the left. Tip shot over there by Brooke Mosher. Nice to Husker dig. Second touch kill. Guess who? Becca, Becca Alec time. B-A-T, 5-3 Huskers in the second. Hey, Huskers fans, tomorrow. Join us for Sports Nightly at 6 p.m. as we break down the latest Nebraska football practice report from Mickey Joseph. Then at 7, it's John Cook and John Baylor with the Nebraska Volleyball Radio Show. Tune in to your local affiliate or at Huskers.com or by using the Huskers mobile app. Go Big Red. Families who travel to Nebraska's only Ronald McDonald House are facing extremely uncomfortable situations. Their child is sick in an unfamiliar city, unsure of how to handle it all. 
But when they walk in the Ronald McDonald House, they can find comfort in the little things. A quiet moment away from the bombardment of beeps and buzzes in a hospital room. The taste of a home-cooked meal. A calming voice saying it'll be okay. Help us provide the little things that make a big difference. Support a one-night stay for a family in need by visiting rmhcomaha.org slash Huskers. Hey, Husker fans, it's time to gear up for the season. So let's do it right. Jerseys, hats, hoodies, and more. Shields has everything you need to show your Nebraska pride. Visit our fan shop online or in-store for the biggest and best brands in the game. You'll find the right gear to level up your team spirit with all the essentials for your pregame parking lot party. Shields, proud partner of Husker Athletics and football fans everywhere. Let Shelter Insurance get you in the game this football season. The Nebraska Huskers are gearing up for another big year, and this is your chance to win tickets from Shelter Insurance and the Husker Radio Network. Contact a Nebraska Shelter agent, and they'll register you for a chance to win tickets to one of four home football games this season. Only Shelter agents can register you, so call, email, or drop by for your chance to win. Find an agent near you at shelterinsurance.com slash huskers and ask them to register you to win.
This is the Nebraska Men's Basketball Radio Show with head coach Fred Hoiberg. Presented by your Midwest Ford dealers. Visit buyfordnow.com. Step back, no shot. Back right side to Denham. Back to Tomonaga. He shoots the three. Got it! Bingo! There's three for Casey Tomonaga. Driving again and a double-fisted dunk at the rim by Sam Griesel. Back-to-back buckets by the transfer from North Dakota State. Lloyd to Koyanitz. Good hands. Catches the ball in the paint on the block. Puts it up. Got it! Ole Koyanitz! Finally, Griesel gets the defensive carom. Down the floor to Lloyd. Shoots the three on the way. Bang! A ring! Ramel Lloyd Jr. with a big, 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 big three. How about that shot by Ramel Lloyd coming down in transition? Left elbow with it is Gary. Drives inside, spins, puts it up and in! Jawan Gary in an and one! Put him in a spin cycle and got the two. Wiltshire between the legs dribble, jump stop in the paint, pull up Jay on the way, not good. Rebound, put back up and in by Jawan. Jawan Geary with an offensive board and put back. One bounce out to Bandamel, three on the shot clock, 25 footer. Got it! At the shot clock horn. How about that three by Bandamel? Here is your host, Greg Sharp, on the Huskers Radio Network. Well, here we are back with week number two of our basketball show for the season. Oscars now have put the exhibition season behind them, and now they'll get geared up for the regular season, which starts a week from tonight. In fact, right about now, a week from now, you're going. Maine will be in town. Yeah, exciting times. It's it's always good to get a couple games under your belt, especially in front of fans. Uh, Got a lot out of yesterday. I thought it was very important for us to play that game. And, uh, you know, now we're able to go back and watch film tomorrow. We had uh, took an off day today and, you know, correct and fix a lot of things heading into the opener next week. What would your team teach you? What what would you learn about them? Well, I, I saw resiliency, that's for sure. And, you know, obviously not the start we were looking for, uh, you know, digging a 10 nothing hole out of the gate. But, you know, we responded to it. Casey came off the bench and hit a couple threes to take the lid off the basket. And uh, we kept fighting. And I was really pleased with our defense at the uh, end of the first half. I think they were four for 21, uh, the, the, the last eight-minute stretch. And we were able to pull all the way back to within five. And it was a seven-point game at halftime. Unfortunately, we had another poor start, poor start to the game poor start to the second half, continued to fight, continued to battle. Uh, was a m- one-possession game for a lot of the second half. Unfortunately, just couldn't get over the hump. Those, and you had a bit of a slow start against Chadron, really. The, any Anything, you, if you're looking at that, what, is there any explanation for that, do you think? Yeah, we did, and, you know, a lot of it had to do with Colorado. They, they, really, um, they really pressured us defensively, which was great for us to see with their size, length, physicality. We knew going into it that was the strength of their team. They out-rebounded a very uh, physical Wyoming team by 20 in their exhibition, um, or, or sorry, their scrimmage and uh, yeah, I rebounded them overall by 20. So it was a really good experience to play that type of physicality with those bodies because that's what we're going to see pretty much for the entire year with, I believe, 28 of our 31 games against high major opponents. Uh, so really good game uh, for us to play. We, again, I was proud of how the guys continue to battle and fight and uh, you know keep that thing competitive uh, for the full 40 minutes. And you did it without Derek. Derek was not in uniform for you on the end of the bench, so Blaze got a chance to start, and you were telling us before the show started the altitude got to him a little bit it, it got to a lot of our guys and, and talking to him after and I listen I've played in Colorado a lot over the course of my career four games in Boulder uh, playing back in the old big eight and then uh, you know multiple games against the Nuggets when, when I was playing in the league including a, a very competitive playoff uh, series uh, when I was playing for the Timberwolves so it is I mean that that altitude it's a real thing and you know it, it hit our guys especially our bigs I thought and you know Blaze. Um, you know, he, he actually was sick this morning. So I think he had a little bit of a bug going into yesterday, which affected uh, him overall. He was having trouble changing ends. I think we only played him uh, 10 or 11 minutes. Uh, and this was coming after one of his better practices of the year. So, you know, hopefully it was an altitude thing, uh, you know, not feeling great. Uh, hopefully get him back on the court tomorrow, uh, start a practice, because it's uh, obviously a very important week now heading into the season. One big that played really well for you was Oleg. I was really pleased. Uh, Oleg did an unbelievable job coming off. Our, our bench, they had 18 points uh, in that first half. And, you know, Oleg had, for really his first action, meaningful action, uh, you know, since he's been here in Nebraska after sitting out and redshirting his first year, showed great poise on the post, had, had three really nice uh, moves, showed great footwork uh, and good patience down there, and then battled on the other end. So, yeah, it was was pleased with Oleg for, uh, for the, his first meaningful extended minutes uh, that he got in a Husker uniform. How much growth have you seen from him from the time he walked on campus? Yeah, a ton. I mean, yeah. you know, first of all, in his body. I mean, he was he was extremely skinny. 
when he got here. Does, uh, Kurt Joseph, our strength coach, has done a, t- a tremendous job uh, getting him ready. We have a redshirt program for the guys that aren't on the court playing competitively. Uh, you know, they're very instrumental in our practices, helping prepare uh, the guys that are eligible to play with, with working on the scout team. But, you know, working on their bodies is as, as important as anything, and that's what Oleg did. Uh, the other thing he's really worked on, he, you know, he had a really kind of funky knuckleball when he got to campus and he's really worked on that he's one of our harder workers he comes in every day uh, for extra work and it's great to see that hard work paying off how's he doing on the defensive end yeah he's he's growing he's he's getting better yeah. um you know it's obviously a huge adjustment from where he grew up playing and uh you know what he's been able to do but uh yeah that's always the biggest adjustment um but you know again i thought he battled colorado's bigs and they've got some big strong lengthy uh bodies and i thought he held his own down there that's hard to sit at it and entire year in this day and age of college sports the portal and that's something very few people do to do that you I mean you it was a lot more common when you played and even when you were at Iowa State as a head coach you had to sit out that full year it's really rare now it is rare and um you know I it, it was a conversation that we had with Oleg and with his parents on you know is is it going to be where he plays the last couple minutes uh you know of a meaningless game that would have been his role last year or do you sit out get better grow and save that year and you know we just decided collectively as a group that that was the way to go how are your two freshmen doing they're doing well i you know again i thought both of them uh went out there didn't play with any fear for her first uh contest on the road boy did uh, a three ramel came down yeah. uh the floor without hesitation the thing i liked most about ramel yesterday was his physicality he had two of his best blockouts of the season where he came down cracked down on a big guy uh drove him under underneath the baseline and you know that was one area we really wanted to see him grow was uh you know increasing that physical makeup and he responded to that yesterday uh jamarcus came off I, 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 no hesitation uh in five minutes got off three threes and that's what his role is going to be and uh you know the potential for him you know coming off the bench and you know being a guy that can knock down a shot for us especially in a night where we didn't shoot well uh you know but for jamarcus i, I liked him uh coming out with that aggressive mentality and uh had three shots that uh, you know he's a very good shooter he's one of the better shooters on this roster the slow starts does that make you look at that opening group anymore or you think you think you're set with that five i know derek didn't play yesterday but are you do you think you're set or where, where we'll, we'll, we'll look at it we'll evaluate it this week and uh you know we'll throw some different lineups and combinations out there we've got five practices that we'll have this week we have to take our one last off day of the uh, preseason i believe that's going to be on thursday so today and thursday are our last two days off so yeah we'll get some really good practices evaluate it and then uh, see what we want to do on on monday well and the guy i'm thinking about is juan I mean, is he doing enough to get into that first five and starting the game? Out? Yeah, again, he'll definitely be under consideration uh, for that. He's given us great energy. I've liked that spark that he has given us uh, off yeah, the bench. Right. Um, you know, he got a little tired uh, last night for a stretch after, you know, scoring three straight baskets. And, you know, we played him a little bit at the five. We have not practiced one possession with Jawan at the five spot. So, you know, to go out there and run a couple different things after timeout where we could use his quickness advantage uh, with a big guy guarding him where he got to the basket, um, you know, I thought we did a good job with that. But, you know, Jawan, uh, you know, certainly has shown that he's going to be a very valuable part of this team. I was going to say, it's, it's not like he's pouting. He's coming in and giving you great effort. So it's not like he's upset that he's not getting his name called over the PA running out in the spotlights. Yeah, I mean, listen, everybody's, the goal of the player individually is to be in the rotation. And, you know, the, the, it's much more important to be in the game at the end than it is at the beginning. And that's always been a message. You know, we talk to our guys all the time. You, all you can worry about is what you can control. It was one of the best pieces of advice I got from Reggie Miller uh, very early as a professional player. And, uh, you know, it it is. You have to control your emotions. You can't, uh, you know, get too high or get too low. That's one very important thing. And then the other thing is just worry about what you can control, and that's going out and working hard and show that you belong. With him and Kese, they're both high-energy guys, and bringing them off the bench can probably give you a bit of a spark. It he, certainly did yesterday. It, it did, and, you know, again, Kese, that, that's, he has the capability of doing that, taking the lid off the basket, and we were really struggling uh, to score that thing early, and he comes off and knocks down, you know, pretty much back-to-back three-pointers to get us on the board and, and pull within single digits. Colorado went on another run. Uh, kept our composure uh, and again closed the half. I think we were on an 11 to 1 run at one point in that first half. So, you know, that's that big thing with this group stay resilient, 
you know, handle adversity well. And again, for the first time, especially on the road, I thought our guys did a good job with it. Dorothy Lynch, home style, light and lean dressing, endless flavorabilities. Let's talk about the flop. In case they got teed up for that. Is that a point of emphasis this year? What? What is that about? Don't you usually get warned? It didn't seem like there was any of that. And they took away the warning this year. They did. They took away the warning. Okay. That was one. That was really the one significant rule change that they made this year was taking away that warning on the flop. They want to completely eliminate it. Uh, you know, looking back at it, you know, that's, it's such a judgmental call. I mean, there's some certainly obvious ones. Uh, it looked to me like he did get hit in the chest a little bit. How much is enough to knock you off your spot? I mean, that's where it becomes judgment. Or if you get hit when you try to take a charge, you know, is it enough of a hit, uh, you know, to, uh, you know, warrant a, a true charge attempt? Or are they going to call a flop on that? So when there is contact, that's where I don't like it. I, I think it has to be, you know, you just flat out fall. You know, they talk about the head bob when you snap your head back on a drive that could be called a flop now uh, but it is a very judgmental call by the official and certainly something that can impact the final score of a game were coaches pushing this change uh i don't know how you know honestly the the rules committee you know they bring a lot of things but There's, i think it was aren't, more don't coaches sit on that though? yeah they do absolutely but i think it was more just the ncaa and the refs came together and said they wanted to get the flop completely eliminated from the game and you know listen it, it it is something i i fell a lot as a player you know and some of it was protecting my landing area and you know if somebody's coming underneath you you don't want to land on a foot right. wrong and you know for me it was a way uh, to avoid that you know potential thing from happening did it bother him yesterday or could you tell i don't think so no he he, he no it didn't bother him no bothered the coaches <laughs> probably a little bit more than than, than him uh cj's not gotten off to a very good start and i know you haven't probably run any actions just for him is he getting nervous about it? It's not dropping through for him in games yet, or is he good? No, no, he's fine. And, you know, I, I had a good meeting with CJ this morning. And, you know, the big, the big thing for him, I, you know, it's all about his shot prep. And last year, the second half of the season, he shot over 50% from the three-point line. He's had a tremendous offseason, um, you know, really good uh, training camp portion uh, of our season so far. And, you know, we're confident that his shots are going to go, especially when we start running actions for him. We, we kept it very basic, very simple. Once again, last night, I thought about it throwing that out with the start of that game but then we sure. went on a little run kept it competitive and you know we stuck to uh what we had talked about with keeping it very basic heading into the season so we've got uh you know again a, a big package where we can run specific actions for players especially when they need to get a shot I, I don't know how much you got out of shatter and you always get something out of playing against somebody other than your own team but i bet you got a lot out of yesterday just because colorado is conference size they're, they're, that's what you're going to see night in and night out of the Big Ten and they threw a lot of pressure stuff at you it was a good learning night yeah it, both were I you know I take a lot out of both those games you know after the shattering game we would do what we always do after a game had a, a lengthy film session and then you know went out and worked on the things that we needed to address um, you know for this game uh, you know the difference in the size obviously was the number one difference when you play against a Pac-12 high major team like this uh, shattering we knew we, we would get tested off the bounce with a dribble drive type offense uh, this game was more about physicality and you know getting into the paint that's that's what they're going to make a living doing uh, this year and you know again I, I was proud of how our guys responded on a night where we didn't shoot it not only from the three-point line but you know we were three for ten from the free throw line uh, you know, after digging a 10-0 hole to start the game, we lose the game by 11. So we continue to battle, continue to fight. Uh, and again, that's one thing you want to see. How do you respond to adversity? We won this game last year, uh, you know, by close to 20 points and had a, almost 30-point lead. they remember that. Too. At one point. Well, yeah, you know, whatever it is. But, you know, again, we, had, we really didn't hit adversity in that game. Now you go into the season without being tested in your two preseason contests this year we were and you know to play this type of game not only against a high major opponent but doing it on the road in a in a tough condition uh you know playing in the mountains and you know it's that's going to benefit us i do like the six seven point guard that that can cause other teams problems yeah he you know we we put in a little uh action to get him on on a post up and to get him on an isolation uh in the basket and they they adjusted they put their six six eight uh, defender on him, one of the right. more versatile guys, and Sam still 
was able at times to back down and, and get to the basket and, you know, showed a nice jump hook, uh, had some really good post moves, you know, the crossover behind the back where he went in and dunked it in the first half. So it just shows you Sam's versatility. Um, you know, we missed one pull behind on, on uh, uh, you know, a, a double team or a dig in the post, uh, you know, that we'll get. We'll get that shot. We want to get our best shooter up at the top of the floor, which we had CJ. It was just a little bit of a miscommunication on that and ended up being a turnover. But, yeah, that can be a huge weapon for us with, uh, with getting Greasel in the post. Folks, our, our lines are open for you. Text or calls 402-413-2400. It is our Sports Sunday Hotline brought to you by Woodhouse, where you can shop your way from one of the 16 convenient locations or online at woodhouse.com anytime. 18 brands and a huge selection of pre-owned. You can always find what you are looking for with Woodhouse. More with the coach coming up. From the University of Nebraska-Lincoln, I'm student government president Jake Drake with Campus News. Nebraska has the most technically advanced buildings in the Big Ten, according to an annual review of universities across the country. Nebraska has also saved over $85 million over the past 17 years by making long-term investments in clean, reliable energy sources, cutting-edge automation, and collaborations across campus. The name on the mailbox may say Smith, Myers, Baumgartner, or Johnson, but when you choose to plant with Rob Seco, it includes your name, too, making you a stockholder in a company that's invested in you. With the simplicity that makes us easy to do business with, relationships that bring more to the table, the technology, traits, and genetics that take on local conditions, and people with the know-how to use it. And Rob Seco, the only stockholder we listen to is you. Woodhouse Nissan makes car buying easy, enjoyable, and stress-free. We will bring the dealership to your driveway with Nissan at home. You can shop, drive, and buy a new or pre-owned Nissan all from the comfort of your own home. Explore every aspect of the purchasing process at your pace and convenience. Get real pricing on your vehicle of choice, review lease and financing options, and complete a credit application. Get to your next adventure faster with Woodhouse Nissan. Farmers can make what seems impossible reality with a little hard work and ingenuity. They find solutions to reduce inputs and improve their yield. Valley Irrigation is no different. As the leader in irrigation technology, we deliver results and optimize your operation. Because when you have a vision for the future, you need the people that can make it possible by your side. Expect what's next. Expect what's possible from Valley. Visit us at valleyirrigation.com. Bump set to the left, Matty Kubik blocked back. Great cover by Kenzie. Right side roll shot, Whitney Lonstein, not down. Illinois feeds left. Raina Terry blocked back. Whitney Lonstein, Becca Allen. All of these blocks by Nebraska opponents are getting covered. Hey, Huskers fans, this Wednesday, join us as Huskers Volleyball takes on the Indiana Hoosiers at the Devaney. John Baylor and Lauren Cook-West take to the airwaves at 7.30 p.m. Tune into your local affiliate or at Huskers.com or by using the Huskers mobile app. Go Big Red. Families who travel to Nebraska's only Ronald McDonald House are facing extremely uncomfortable situations. Their child is sick in an unfamiliar city, unsure of how to handle it all. But when they walk in the Ronald McDonald House, they can find comfort in the little things. A quiet moment away from the bombardment of beeps and buzzes in a hospital room. The taste of a home-cooked meal. A calming voice saying it'll be okay. Help us provide the little things that make a big difference. Support a one-night stay for a family in need by visiting rmhcomaha.org slash Huskers. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. Agriculture is the economic engine of the Midwest. At Acres Equipment, we dedicate ourselves to making that engine run smoothly. We supply our farmers and ranchers with quality John Deere equipment, parts, and service. We also deliver the most advanced technology and precision ag strategies to help them farm today and for the future. Acres Equipment, solutions for every field. Bank of the West is offering the first checking account designed for climate action. It gives back 1% of the account's net revenue to the planet at no cost to you. Shows you the estimated carbon impact of debit card purchases. And there's no minimum balance required. Learn more at bankofthewest.com slash 1%. Additional conditions apply. 
Member FDIC. When you're prepared for life, you get more out of life. When you're prepared, you spend less time worrying and more time doing the things you love. How prepared are you? When you're ready to find out, Emeritus is ready to help. First, we get to know you. Then we make a plan together, one that lets you enjoy today and prepare for tomorrow. That's what we call fulfilling life. Emeritus, insurance, employee benefits, financial services. Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Nebraska exist to be there with you. They are rooting for the schools and teachers who make our communities great. That's why Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Nebraska is proud to sponsor Touchdowns for Teachers and ask Husker fans to nominate outstanding educators who help Nebraska students reach their potential. If there's a teacher you want to recognize for the impact they've made in your community, find a nomination form at huskers.com slash touchdowns for teachers. Every day, Central Valley Ag works with our farmers to feed a hungry planet. CVA's Avail T5 uses patented polymer technology to optimize phosphorus performance, making crops healthier and boosting yields while reducing phosphorus loss to the environment. Register to win 160 acres of T5 treatment valued at over $1,500 when you go online to cvacoop.com. Our planet is hungry. Together, we feed it. Central Valley A, the official co-op of Husker Nation. Farmers Mutual of Nebraska is proud to support Husker Athletics. Having a competent teammate beside you makes all the difference when it comes to protecting what matters most. With the proven track record of dependable coverage, unmatched financial strength, and a prompt claim service team right here in Nebraska, that's insurance kept local. Visit FMNE.com to contact an agent for a quote today. Farmers Mutual of Nebraska, always alongside you. Back inside our Huskers Radio Network Broadcast Center, it's sponsored by Acres, the Midwest premier John Deere dealer, supplying the equipment and service to advance agriculture, and much more Acres solutions for every field. It's our basketball show. The head coach, Fred Hoiberg, with us. A week from tonight, Huskers open the season. The main Black Bears will be here for a 7 o'clock tip at Pinnacle Bank Arena, and then you'll play Omaha on Thursday night. Uh, so two home games next week, 402-413-2400. I was asking you during the break, Got, you've got a lot of new guys on your staff. Are you are you getting comfortable with them and their inputs and the communication during a game? How's that been for two exhibitions? Yeah, it's been it's been really good. I've been I've been very happy with with uh, everything going on. Uh, you know, from that standpoint, and um, you know, Ernie has brings us a lot of experience. He's been out on the road a lot. Uh, he's got great connections all over the place. Uh, you know, we've got a couple of really good uh, potential visitors uh, coming in here in the next few weeks. And, you know, their high school seasons are about to start. So, right. you know, to be able to get one or two before things get crazy in their lives, uh, you know, is very important. So I've been really pleased uh, with everything that Ernie has offered. You know, he's got a very tough mentality to him. Um, you know, I've really got him watching our rebounding and toughness uh, type plays. Uh, you know, making an edit for for us after every game. Um, you know, Coach Howard is 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 awesome. You know, he's uh, uh, you know brings some things uh, you know very unique to our uh, to our staff. Another guy that's got connections uh, all over the place. And you know, Coach uh, Coach Nate, he he and I've been around for a long time, going all the way back to our days at Iowa State when I hired him as a uh, as a grad assistant and then just worked his way up in our video room and you know be, very soon became a full-time assistant and i brought him to chicago uh with me as well and he spent a year coaching the windy city bulls in their inaugural season so he knows exactly what i want what i'm looking for and what i need uh so yeah the the staff has has been terrific and then you know guys like matt holt who's been with me now in the video room uh ever since i got here uh you know very valuable member of our staff uh manual tommy uh, in a player development role, uh, you know, does a little bit of everything for us. And then Luca uh, Virgilio as, as our director of operations, uh, who does a phenomenal job with academics and handling the budget and scheduling and that kind of thing. So uh, really pleased with everything we've got going on. Ernie's been a head coach. Probably doesn't earn having a guy that's had to make all the tough calls during the game. Yeah, that's it's very beneficial when you, when you can add that, especially when you know when we had the opening on our staff to get a guy of Ernie's caliber. Uh, was huge for us at, at that time. And I forgot one to mention one, uh, Cheryl Burbach, who basically runs the office. She's the boss. <laughs> or she is absolutely, <laughs> she's absolutely the boss. But, yeah, she keeps everything organized for us. And, you know, the players certainly spend a lot of time around. You guys are such a tight-knit group. It's it helpful that they have the respect of the team. And 
they get along well. Yeah, no, no, no doubt about it. And, you know, again, I, I, I've been really pleased with the interaction uh, with the players. Those guys are always coming in for extra work. And, you know, that's where you spend a lot of time relationship building sure with those players, not only in film sessions, but, you know, also getting extra work on the floor with them. So, yeah, it, it's, it's, it's been, been good. Um, and, and obviously that's very important. Ramel Lloyd, we talked about him in the opening segment. He comes from a pretty good basketball family, doesn't he? Yeah, dad was a heck of a player. Great player. He, yep, started out at Syracuse and then ended up transferring to Long Beach where he was about a 20-point uh, per game score. Still has a beautiful stroke when he, when he comes down and shoots on the floor. Uh, you can see why he scored it so well. He's got kind of a lean back on his shot. He's got beautiful rotation on his ball. Uh, but, yeah, he comes from, uh, from a great family. Yeah. And those freshmen, it's a big adjustment to, it's to make huge. this thing. It's huge, especially, to, you know, with teams, especially now with the portal, teams just, they stay old. And, uh, you know, you're playing against teams, you know, we'll play against a couple teams these first few games that have older players. And, you know, the adjustment period, uh, you know, for guys like Ramel and, and Jamarcus, especially in Kale uh, coming in here, um, you know, Blaze's first year playing at this level. Uh, it's a huge adjustment for them. And, you know, the luxury that our guys have is they're playing behind two fifth-year guys uh, in the backcourt with Greasel and with Bandamel. And, you know, they're, they're not going to be here next year. So, you know, the opportunity for these guys, you know, not only to learn and have uh, the opportunity, the potential to get minutes for us, uh, but then be ready to step in, in uh, you know, in a big role a year from now. I told you this last week uh, off air. Emmanuel, I love his game. I just love he does a lot of little things that may not show up in a box score, but that when you go back and watch your film, like that was a key point to that whole possession. Yeah, well, you need to talk about altitude. I mean, he is picking up full court, uh, you know, hawking the ball, and he had a, an incredible play where he's got up, stole the ball, had a deflection, went in there, made a beautiful fake, uh, and got a layup. You know, I think that was, uh, you know, about three baskets in a row is, is what happened. And, you know, those are huge momentum plays. Uh, you have to find a way to manufacture easy baskets. And by Emmanuel picking up full court, you know, hopefully that'll give us the opportunity to get some steals, create some turnovers, and get us in transition. The assist number was lower yesterday. Played a much better team. What, what, is there a number in mind, if you score in the 60s or 70s, that you would like to have a number of assists? Yeah, I mean, obviously you want a high assist rate and, uh, you know, with your baskets. But, yeah, yesterday, you know, I th we had six for the game. And, um, you know, again, some of that was we're not running a lot right now. Uh, you know, some of it obviously was Colorado. you got to give them credit for everything that they did, pressure, deny, um, you know. Uh, you know, not having Derek out there affects us when we play against a pressure team as well. He has the ability to be a pressure release, uh, you know, and take some of that heat off with either uh, isolation at the, at the, uh, uh, at, from the nail at the free throw line or, uh, you know, to be able to use a tremendous passer, you know, for somebody of his size. So, you know, several things played into that. Uh, you know, we had, I think the first night we had a high assist number, you, um, you know, and moving forward, uh, you know, obviously that's going to be big for our team. We want to be an unselfish team. We want to make the extra play, make the extra pass. And then obviously when you don't shoot the ball well, that's going to affect your numbers as well. Nebraska A11 says go dig red. Before you dig, always call or click A11 to have your utility lines marked. It's free. It's easy. It's the law. How much zone do you think this team will play throughout the season? Well, we have it available. We have it in, and you know, it's something that we we have uh, the potential to run if we need it. Um, you know, it's it's something we're we're going to majority of the time be a man to man team. Uh, yeah, but every team has it available. You know, in case you need to change the momentum of a game or if a team's hurting you off the bounce, you know, potentially to go go to that type of defense. But you know, for the most part, we will be a man to man team this year. You've had luck the last couple seasons with your zone. Yeah, we, we've thrown it out there, for, you know, especially, you know, when you look at some of the lineups we had out there at the end of the year, uh, you know, when we cut a rotation to eight, uh, we did play a little bit more zone. And, uh, you know, again, it's something that we've always had as a weapon. Uh, you know, I like the makeup of our group, especially certain lineups that we have out there with length, uh, you know, hopefully create some turnovers with pressure with with man to man. Uh, but we do have it uh, available if we need it. Yeah. Um, yeah. A lot of the times, because everybody's rosters wrote, roll over so much, and I think that's part of the reason everybody's having a hard time getting a handle on the Big Ten is everybody's rosters look so different, including ours. Mm -hmm. It's different. Sometimes it, those changing defenses can be a, a game changer because teams aren't quite ready to run all that stuff. Yeah, yeah, it, it is. And, and again, yeah, well, and, and when you have, I mean, you, you look at how it is. Uh, you know, you're man-to-man. -man, you have a huge package of plays. You know, your zone package uh, is not as much because you don't see a lot of it. Right. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it, it's it's in there, Greg, and, you know, you'll, you'll see it from time to time for sure. Yeah. All right. Uh, 
You get a week off here before two games next week. You said today was an off day. Give us kind of what the calendar looks like for the next five, six days. Yeah, tomorrow we're actually going to we're going to do work a lot in our special teams uh, type actions. We've been doing two a days, uh, at least one day a week, and our second practice generally is working on special teams, inbounds plays, uh, underneath on the side, low clock plays, uh, full court without a timeout. Uh, you know, little things fouling up three if we do want to go to that. Um, you know, just uh, a lot of the things that y you want to throw in that you generally don't put a lot of time into with a, f with a full practice. Uh, so we're going to work a lot on that zone, you know, press, uh, you know, all those things. So we'll work on that tomorrow. Uh, it'll be a little bit of a lighter day. Uh, Wednesday will be our hardest day of the week. We'll go, um, you know, at least two hours. Uh, we'll get up and down a lot. We'll do a lot of scrimmaging. Uh, it'll be a very physical practice. Uh, Thursday will be our last off day, and then we get three days, uh, a harder one on Friday, you know, and then start toning it down a little bit Saturday, and then Sunday will be our lightest day heading into the game on Monday. Well, Monday opener. First day that anybody's allowed to play. I love the fact that they kind of have one day designated to start the season yeah i think most teams play that night yeah. as well so it, it, it is it's an exciting time it'll be some great high quality games uh that opening night like there always is and you know and it's certainly an exciting time of year for all of us a lot of games early you have a bit of a break kind of around finals week and christmas week but you, you're going to know a lot about your team by december the first don't you think oh for sure i mean you know you look at the uh, first two games we're going to play two quality opponents in maine and in, in omaha um, both with new coaches both with new coaches so we don't know a lot of what to expect at this time um you know then we go to st john's we have a week off to prepare for that St. John's game, but we're going to see things that you normally don't see early in a season with their pressure, uh, you know, the 40 minutes of hell, um, you know, that Mike, the, that Mike Anderson has right. always run. And, you know, they'll, they'll play some zone. It, it's just, you know, one of those games where you got to bring your hard hat and lunch pail. You know, his teams always play extremely hard and they really pressure you. So, you know, that's going to be a, a, a really good contest for us on, again, a road uh, against a quality uh, high major opponent. Uh, then we have one more bye game, and then we go right to Orlando, uh, and we'll play three high major teams down there in the uh, uh, you know the Disney Classic. So yeah, really good early portion of our schedule. You like tournaments? I do. Yeah, I do like tournaments. I, I've always enjoyed them. Um, you know, it's, it gives us again a chance to play three really good games in a short amount of time uh, that simulates postseason. And you know, Big Ten tournament. Uh, you know, if you're fortunate enough to play after that, you know, you're going to be playing games in a short amount of time with very little preparation. Uh, so, yeah, early on, again, it gives you a chance to see what your team is all about and how they handle those types of situations. 402-413-2400, the number to dial us up with a comment or question or fire off a text. That is our Sports Nightly Hotline brought to you by Woodhouse, where you can shop your way from one of the 16 convenient locations or online at woodhouse.com. Anytime, they've got 18 brands and a huge selection of pre-owned that you can always find what you are looking for with Woodhouse. More with the coach coming up next. In America, the future belongs to everyone. So we designed the Ford trucks of the future for everyone. Ford F-Series, America's best-selling trucks for 45 years straight. Made for performance and capability on and off-road. Because the trucks of the future aren't designed for a few. They're built for America. Ford F-Series. Drive one today. Based on 1977 to 2021 calendar year total sales. <gasps> Look, honey. It's a falling star. Let's make a holiday wish. Well, that's a satellite. Oh, there's another. No, airplane. So what are we supposed to wish on? Let's enter non-winning Nebraska Lottery Holiday Wishes 2X, 10X, or 20X scratch tickets for a chance to win one, five, or $10,000. It's the Holiday Wishes second chance promotion. Now the one over there has to be a falling star. Yeah, sorry. Bottle rocket fired off by the college kid next door. Promotion ends January 4th, 2023. Top prize odds vary by game. One of the best Thanksgiving traditions is football. And this year, one of the best ways to celebrate that tradition is to hit the road with the Huskers and AAA. This year's annual Black Friday game will be played in Iowa City. And AAA is giving Huskers fans a chance to win a road trip package, including two game tickets, a gas card, and hotel accommodations. Enter now for a chance to win at Huskers.com slash AAA Road Trip. Again, that's Huskers.com slash AAA Road Trip. Expect something more with AAA. Congratulations, you're having a little girl. At that moment, everything changed. Our hopes and dreams for ourselves were instantly replaced by our hopes and dreams for her. 
We got life insurance policies from Shelter Insurance so that regardless of what life throws at us, we'll still be able to provide the world to her. Shelter Life Insurance Company, Columbia, Missouri. See shelter agents Tanya Blaine or Jesse Dunbar in Norfolk or Agent Bud Morell in Ogallala. Every day, Central Valley Ag works with our farmers to feed a hungry planet. CVA's Avail T5 uses patented polymer technology to optimize phosphorus performance, making crops healthier and boosting yields while reducing phosphorus loss to the environment. Register to win 160 acres of T5 treatment valued at over $1,500 when you go online to cvacoop.com. Our planet is hungry. Together, we feed it. Central Valley Ag, the official co-op of Husker Nation. Whether you compete on the court, at the track, on the field, or in the fields, winning isn't just a goal. It's a mindset shaped, honed, and defined throughout the season. That's why farmers pushing themselves to be the best plant DeKalb brand corn. Wherever you compete, winning has roots. Perform at your best with DeKalb. Always read and follow grain marketing and all other stewardship practices and pesticide label directions. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. For 46 years, our focus has been our customers at Sid Dillon Buick GMC Cadillac in Fremont. Come see for yourself how easy buying your new car, truck, or SUV at Sid Dillon can be. Stop by our dealership in Fremont to order your new vehicle and shop in stock and inbound inventory. And if you need a commercial vehicle, we're your GMC Business Elite dealer. Shop at SidDillonBuickGMC.com. You are what drives us, Sid Dillon. GMC, we are professional grade. As the Huskers head to halftime, Frank is off the couch and headed for the fridge. Ooh, but he can't make it because he is so cold. The furnace is out again. SOS, he screams, and calls SOS Heating and Cooling, his favorite Luxair dealer trusted since 1950. With Luxair, you get a free 10-year labor warranty with a new system. SOS Heating and Cooling. SOS to the rescue. SOS, SOS. When you're prepared for life, you get more out of life. When you're prepared, you spend less time worrying and more time doing the things you love. How prepared are you? When you're ready to find out, Emeritus is ready to help. First, we get to know you. Then we make a plan together, one that lets you enjoy today and prepare for tomorrow. That's what we call fulfilling life. Emeritus, insurance, employee benefits, financial services. Dear gas prices, go take a hike. Toyota is the number one retail brand for electrified vehicles for 22 years. The Toyota hybrid lineup brings efficiency with power, savings with style, and top-notch tech to keep you connected. Not to mention plush premium interiors and the most advanced Toyota safety features. So, now you know who you're talking to. Toyota, the number one retail brand for electrified vehicles for 22 years. Toyota. The brand with a hybrid or electric vehicle for every driver. Toyota, the brand that helps save you money at the pump. Now, let me ask you a question, dear gas prices. You really think you can stand in the way of the number one retail brand for electrified vehicles for 22 years? (laughs) Think again. Toyota hybrids. Find yours at toyota.com. Toyota, let's go places. Based on manufacturer estimates, CY2000 through 2021 sales. Celebrating 50 years in the commercial real estate development industry in Omaha and nationwide, Noddle Companies is proud to continue its tradition of supporting Husker athletics. Check out what's new in Omaha, which includes revolving recreation and the food hall at Zone 6 in Exarban Village. Another exciting project coming soon are the Blackstone Urban Row townhomes. Noddle Companies, creating long-term value through community development. For more information, visit noddlecompanies.com. Go Big Red. We're back inside our Huskers Radio Network Broadcast Center, which is sponsored by Acres, the Midwest premier John Deere dealer, supplying the equipment and service to advance agriculture and much more Acres solutions for every field. It's our men's basketball show. The head coach with us for just a couple more minutes. We're going to hear from Denim Dawson. Jessica had a chance to catch up with Denim earlier today. This is a guy that you got mid-year last year, right? And then redshirted him or 
let him set out and now he's playing for you yeah that's right he he was able to enroll at semester he was fully qualified academically so we were able to get him in at semester which is a huge benefit for denim just to learn a lot of things about this game to be able to watch uh, you know, everything that we were doing, you know, being able to be there for games to see what the bodies and the physicality and the speed looked like, uh, you know, with the front row seat. And, uh, you know, from day one, I was really impressed. I've talked a lot about that with Denham, with his toughness and with his energy and with his voice. And that has certainly carried over to this year. And, you know, you just look at how he can impact a game, uh, you know, without having to score the ball. And, you know, he'll be another guy as, uh, alongside uh, Emmanuel that can really pick up the ball. In fact, give Emmanuel a break when he's in the game. He, for the most part, will guard the point guard when he's in the game and get up, pick up full court with a 6'6 uh, physical frame. And, you know, he rebounds. He's relentless on the offensive glass and creates a lot of extra possessions for us. So, you know, as, as you see, uh, you know, the size of the opponent for us, you know, I think his role will continue to increase. Uh, but, re yeah, really, really pleased with Denham. Getting him here in January, he had a chance to go up against the McGowans in practice, maybe even see a, a quick, uh, twitchy guy like Alonzo Verge. That's invaluable for him to see that kind of an athlete. Yeah, it's huge. And then, you know, not only that, but learn the offense of every team playing on the yeah. scout team. So he, he's pretty much run every system that he will now have the opportunity to defend uh, this season. And you're right, Greg, to, to be able to go out there and guard uh, Big Ten bodies and, you know, again, run the system. Uh, we always tried to make him the featured guy uh, on the scout team just to really put the ball in his hands and see what he could do. And, you know, again, he was he was tremendous for us uh, for that, uh, you know, those fi final couple months of our season. About as athletic a guy as you have on the team. He really is a good athlete. Yeah, no question. And, again, it, you know, his ability to get out in transition, uh, you know, I think you saw some of that yeah. uh, in that first game, especially high fly in there, you know, going and getting some tip-ins. Uh, but, yeah, his ability to get out in transition is, is what makes him very special. All right, we're going to cut you loose. Good luck next week let's get this thing started yeah thank you appreciate it greg should be fun hey if the oscars on football return the first or second have opening kick for a touchdown you could be a winner of a fifty-four thousand dollar credit on a new vehicle from woodhouse auto family dealership this season a contestant gets chosen every week go to huskers.com slash woodhouse for official rules and how to get yourself entered all right huskers and well the main black bear seven o'clock tip on monday our pregame coverage will begin at 6, and then on Thursday night, it's the Mavericks of Omaha. We'll be at PBA, again, a 7 o'clock tip-off, 6 o'clock pregame with Kent Pavelka and Jake Muehlheisen. When we come back, Jessica will talk to Denim Dawson. A little player profile for you. That's coming up next. Want to get all the latest Husker news straight to your phone? Need to be the first of your friends to get the scoop on all things Huskers? Sign up for text alerts from Nebraska Athletics. Text Huskers to 83200 to get game time notifications and updates, breaking news, special ticket offers, and more straight to your phone. All the Husker news is just a quick text away. Just text Huskers to 83200. Standard text messaging rates apply and may vary by carrier. Does your business need quick, competitive financing for heavy machinery, trucks, or other equipment? Currency is here to help. Whether you're financing construction equipment, farm equipment, trucks, trailers, or any other big ticket item, Currency will automatically find the best rates. Currency facilitates loans for up to $500,000 with repayment terms up to 72 months. It's fast, easy, and free to use. Visit GoCurrency.com and apply today. Triple B Feed has the products to help your cows thrive. Whether it's weekly delivery of consumption-controlled Lumix liquid minerals with protein or Redmond natural mineral salt for livestock or humans, Triple B has you covered. Let Brian and Brad Blahorn take some of the stress out of your beef production this year. For more information and other products, visit TripleBFeed.com. Triple B Feed, helping you and your cattle. <coughs> To win the game, you gotta have more strength. You gotta be tougher. You gotta be reliable. You gotta want it more than the other guy. And you need a great team you can count on, backing you up the whole time. Whether it's in the field with your Massey Ferguson or on the field with the Huskers, red is the color of getting it done quicker, smarter, and efficiently. So this season, make sure you're checking out the lineup that'll get more done where and when it counts. From your Nebraska Massey Ferguson dealers. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. In America, the future belongs to everyone. 
So we designed the Ford trucks of the future for everyone. Ford F-Series, America's best-selling trucks for 45 years straight. Made for performance and capability on and off-road. Because the trucks of the future aren't designed for a few. They're built for America. Ford F-Series, drive one today. Based on 1977 to 2021 calendar year total sales. <gasps> Look, honey, it's a falling star. Let's make a holiday wish. Well, that's a satellite. Oh, there's another. No, airplane. So what are we supposed to wish on? Let's enter non-winning Nebraska Lottery Holiday Wishes 2X, 10X, or 20X scratch tickets for a chance to win one, five, or $10,000. It's the Holiday Wishes second chance promotion. Now the one over there has to be a falling star. Yes, yeah, sorry. Bottle rocket fired off by the college kid next door. Promotion ends January 4th, 2023. Top prize odds vary by game. Welcome back inside our Huskers Radio Network Broadcast Center, sponsored by Acres, the Midwest premier John Deere dealer, supplying the equipment and service to advance agriculture and much more Acres solutions for every field. As we welcome you back to our final segment of our men's basketball radio show, I'm Jessica Cudi, and excited to be joined by Denim Dawson. Um, you are in the full Halloween spirit here. You've got mm -hmm. your potion hat on. You a big Halloween fan or what? Uh, yeah, I love, I love Halloween. Yeah, what's uh, what's your favorite costume you ever wore? Ever, I would say top two is probably the Red Power Ranger or dressing up as my favorite WWE wrestler, uh, Jeff Hardy. And this is a big debate: best Halloween candy. Best Halloween candy, Tootsie Rolls or mm, I would say any type of Laffy Taffy. Okay, and so you like the chewy, like the gummy yeah. stuff, and worst candy. Dots or anything that has like the lemon flavor <laughs> candy. All right, I love it. I love it. Well, happy Halloween and thanks for joining us. Um, well, just coming off of the final exhibition game, how did you guys feel coming off the floor there at Colorado? No Derek, uh, no Derek Walker, but you guys put up a fight there and, and almost got back into there at the end. Yeah, uh, we learned a lot. We learned that even when we're down, we stay as a team, and that was the most important part. That's something that we've been trying to do ever like since summer we learned that we could just stay with each other we hung out a lot more during the summer so we knew coming into that that our, we can do that and we proved that coach Hoiberg talked a lot about how hard it is to play there because of the altitude what was it like uh i think it hit me the hardest <laughs> i i subbed in subbed out i caught the trainer i was like jake i can't breathe <laughs> and then he was like telling me stuff to do and then five seconds later I'm throwing that behind the bench so I think it hit me the hardest. Wow so it was really that hard. Well how did you guys get accomplished what you wanted to get accomplished in those those first two exhibition games now that the real deal is coming up next Monday? Yeah I would say we did I would say that we, we just learned a lot first and second game first game you know we won that one so we kind of just lived in that one but losing to Colorado we just learned a lot learned that we, we learned how to stay together we got to do stuff more as a team on the court but overall I would say we learned a lot. Let's go back to your recruiting process. Why did you land on Nebraska? Why did you feel like this was going to be the spot for you? Uh, so I did a prep year after I graduated. Mm -hmm. And I was at the prep school, I was just trying to get a lot more offers. And Fred had flew out to see me. I didn't know he was coming. I, honestly, I didn't know who Fred or Nebraska was. But my coach was like, Fred is like, he's a great guy. The school is great. So I mean, and it, it happened pretty quickly. They offered me visit set up very quickly uh, I committed on a visit so it was it was a very quick process into becoming a Husker and you enrolled early and redshirted back in the spring last year what did that do for you just getting a taste of I know you were on the scout team and they raved about what you did to help the team prepare each and every night and um, what did that do for you personally just being able to come in and get a feel for things before you actually played uh, it helped a lot because the Basin Conference, where I'm from, is like it's a lot different. And then coming in, I'm guarding guys like Bryce, Trey, Zoe, and those guys are pros now. So, I mean, that helped me more than I could imagine. So I would say that helped a lot, and I just learned everything a lot more quicker. And there's no doubt about it, in two exhibition games, you can tell you are got your hustle play guy. You make crazy rebounds you fly out of nowhere and I know that that's a big part of what this team wants to do but how did that become a part of what you do and, and your specialty is is making those kinds of plays where you're getting those big offensive rebounds or you're hustling and, and diving on the floor and those kinds of things you know not everybody does it because it's it's very hard I can I can say you get tired quicker you know 
offense and defense. Now you just, if you're on offense, you do it on defense. Now you just sit and trying to catch your breath. But me, I just like to, that gives people energy, gives the team energy, the fans energy. Like the first game, it was a home game, and the fans that were sitting courtside, they saw what I was doing, they were complimenting me like, we love the rebounds, we love it. So you just, it just gives everybody energy, and if that's what I have to do, that's what I'm going to do. What goes into being a good rebounder? Uh, the way that you are, and, and again, just fighting for it, but the way that you can read it coming off the, the glass is not everybody can do that, too. Yeah, uh, so I'm not Dennis Rodman, of course, <laughs> but like AU growing up, that's what always people like, yo, you rebound kind of crazy. Like you just run, you know where the ball is going. They used to call me like mini Dennis Rodman just because of how it was. But it's just people now, they just look. So I'll be like, okay, you're going to look. I'm going to just squeeze past real quick, get this rebound, and be a hustle guy. Nice. Love it. Uh, what about the guy, the um, emphasis on the defensive end? I mean, you're a guy that locks down, Jawan Gary. There's a lot of guys that are really good on the defensive end on uh, this team. How important is that to what this team wants to do is, is what you guys do defensively? Uh, I think it's just a pride thing. We take a lot of pride in that this year from the summer till now. We have certain players who pick up full court. Myself, Eman, uh, Ramel, we just pick up full court and we take pride in it. And we know doing that gives other people breaks. When we get on offense, it's quick and we make them hurry up and shoot the ball or cause a turnover and just another, another big energy thing. What is your mindset defensively when you're uh, picking somebody up full court? Uh, full court, I'm just thinking, okay, get them past half court at a certain time on a shot clock where they're rushing, and our defense isn't rushing. We're poised. We know, okay, we got them at this amount of time, so we're going to get the ball after this possession and get out and make them frustrated. What does it mean to you that, I mean, this team's going to, you're going to play a role for this team this year, and so, you know, again, coming off the redshirt semester and to be called upon in this role, what does that mean to you to, to have that kind of role? Uh, it's, 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 a, it's a joy to me, you know. Being even though I'm not just I'm not an offensive guy, the biggest offensive guy, or like a threat on offense for the like the top three guys. Defense, they know scouting reports are gonna have to know that when Denham comes in, he's gonna pick you up full court. He's gonna crash. He's not gonna take any breaks. So I mean that that plays a big role. As if I was one of the you know top looks on the team. So I mean it it has its ups and downs. Already, too, when you have gotten a big offensive board, it seems like you pick up a foul a lot, too. So is that something that you feel like you can add, too, is, is uh, being a threat at the free throw line, too, once you get some fouls and get to the line? Yeah, you know, when, when you go offensive rebound, they don't expect it as much. So now they're swiping, they're mm -hmm. doing stuff, they're fouling, not purposely, but they don't expect it. So, I mean, easy to get into the line, you know, put pressure on certain players. Now they're falling, fouling out, so it does. All right, so season opener coming up a week from tonight. You guys will be opening this thing up for real. How ready is this team? This team is ready. We bring lots of lots of energy to practice. You know, behind the closed doors, like we do a lot, a lot of energy practices, starter practices, finish practices, and we're we're ready to play at PBA. You know, we we got to practice there the last couple of weeks. The energy is great. The first home game, you know, our uh, we just loved it. How important is it to set the tone? I mean, I know you guys have had an exhibition game under your belt, but to set the tone in game number one to open up the season? Uh, it's very important because, you know, last year season was up and down. So this year we're just, we're just proving that, you know, last year was last year. So people are talking about last year still with this team. That has nothing to do with us. You know, certain players are here, certain players still left. But, you know, we're just here to prove that that was that, was that and this is a whole new year. We're here to prove something different. All right. Well, Denim Dawson, I appreciate your time. Can't wait to watch you back on the court coming up a week. And I know you've already become a fan favorite because of those hustle plays. So appreciate you spending some time and even repping some Halloween. Yeah, of course. Some Halloween decor up here. So appreciate it. Happy Halloween and best of luck this season. Thank you. Happy, happy Halloween to you too. All right. And again, that is Denim Dawson with men's basketball. And that's going to wrap up the show here on tonight's show. Have a great night. Thanks so much for listening and buckle up and put the phone down. A reminder from the NDOT Highway Safety Office. up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts.
Celebrating 50 years in the commercial real estate development industry in Omaha and nationwide, Noddle Companies is proud to continue its tradition of supporting Husker athletics. Check out what's new in Omaha, which includes revolving recreation and the food hall and Zone 6 in Exarban Village. Another exciting project coming soon are the Blackstone Urban Road townhomes. Noddle Companies, creating long-term value through community development. For more information, visit noddlecompanies.com. Go Big Red. Sir, by likes a good pass set to the left. Tip shot over there by Brooke Mosher. Nice to Husker dig. Second touch kill. Guess who? Becca, Becca Alec time. BAT, 5-3 Huskers in the second. Hey, Huskers fans, tomorrow. Join us for Sports Nightly at 6 p.m. as we break down the latest Nebraska football practice report from Mickey Joseph. Then at 7, it's John Cook and John Baylor with the Nebraska Volleyball Radio Show. Tune in to your local affiliate or at Huskers.com or by using the Huskers mobile app. Go Big Red. I'm University of Nebraska Lincoln student Hanna Pham with Campus News. Students from Nebraska's Johnny Carson Center for Emerging Media Arts helped create visual effects for the Star Wars TV series Obi-Wan Kenobi. This opportunity came from a three-month internship with Lola VFX, a visual effects firm in Los Angeles. This internship transitioned to employment, with Huskers also creating effects for the superhero movie Thor, Love and Thunder. Experience the difference at Woodhouse Buick GMC. From the GMC Acadia to the Buick Encore, we're sure to have a vehicle that fits your lifestyle. Our climate-controlled showroom guarantees a comfortable shopping experience every time you visit. Plus, our commitment to our customers continues well beyond the date of purchase. You will leave our lot feeling comfortable and confident in your new vehicle. Start your car buying.